Welcome to the craft and biz of acting, the place to go to learn what they didn't teach you in acting school. When you're looking for the next step in your acting career, we've got you covered. With your host, monologue expert and founder of monologues2go.com, Joy Story. Hello, fellow thespians. You are listening to the craft and biz of acting. I'm your host, Joy Story, and we're here to explore the nuts and bolts of auditioning and performing. Today's guest is the dynamic Lisa Gold. Lisa is president of Act Outside the Box, enlightened business training for actors committed to an extraordinary career. She is also a partner of Actors Connection, New York City's number one networking and educational studio for professional actors. She has been a professional actress for over 35 years and has relationships with hundreds of casting directors and agents through her businesses. Lisa's background on both sides of the biz makes her an expert in the area of marketing for actors. For Act Outside the Box, Act as in Action, Lisa has created seminars, weekend workshops, and industry networking social events offline, as well as a host of courses and blog posts with tons of free info and exercises online. Known for her signature course, How to Get and Keep an Agent, She has helped thousands of actors get representation by understanding their place in the overcrowded marketplace, the money, where their talent fits in, and how to promote what they uniquely have to offer. Working with Lisa makes a difference in your business as a professional actor and can be accomplished via her membership site, yourtalentagent.com, and through private coaching. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thanks for having me. You make me sound so good. Wow. You are good. (laughs) I'm so looking forward to this interview. Me too, because an actor's toolbox is one of the most invaluable things that they don't teach you in acting school. So you are really giving actors kind of the keys to the kingdom. And I would like to know if I sign up for Act Outside the Box, what do I get? Well, that's like saying, I'm going to position it like college. I'm going to sign up for college and go for four years. What do I get? The answer is too large for this conversation. Well, the right. experience that I offer is the business. It's called show business. And Joyce, it's like asking when you go to college, what do I get? You know, in four years ahead of you, the experience is just too numerous to mention, but like college or even going to a private studio to learn your craft training. That's the show. And after all, this is called show business. So what Act Outside the Box provides is the business part that has been a missing piece. And it's probably the biggest missing piece of your education as an actor. Because everybody knows these days that you can be the most talented person, but if you don't know how to bring that product of your talent to market, it's almost a waste. What good is having all this talent and education in the craft? So you want to be able to show that talent by learning the business that is the gap between what you have to offer and what you want and having somebody, by the way, pay for it, right? I would imagine that most people listening to your broadcast are in this for a living. There's plenty of places to go offer your acting chops as a hobby. As a matter of fact, I just saw the most wonderful community theater production of Pearspray. I was quite impressed with the talent and all that went into it. Yet nobody's getting paid. They're doing it for the love of it and for fun. There's lots of stuff out there that you can do live. And now everybody can have their own YouTube channel or any other various means and methods of getting what you have to offer out there. But making money at it? Different ballgame. That's show business. Right. So how does an actor get their tools together, their marketing tools? What's important for them? First thing is mindset. Honestly, that would be my answer to almost any question anybody asked me about almost anything is mindset. This career, first of all, is a setup for upset. You go to the audition, you don't get a call back. Oh, sometimes you get a call back, but then you don't get the job. Oh. Sometimes you get the job, but then you're on the cutting room floor. Oh, then sometimes you get the job, you're seeing the film is panned, no good reviews. Oh, next time you're in a film that gets great reviews and you get an award nomination, but you don't win it. Oh, then, <laughs> then let's say you go through the process and you win the Oscar. Yay. And then you 
don't get the next good film after winning the Oscar. So this career is a set up for upset. Therefore, if you shift your mind, you've got to be an open mindset. A journey is the joy. That making the progress from one from the first step to the next is the joy. And the attaining of the agent or the attaining of the job or the attaining of the goal that you set for yourself, realize you'll either get it or you won't. But even when you get it, then you're going to have the next thing that you put out there that you want to attain. So realizing that this is a journey, it's not a microwave career. Everybody seems to want what they want really super fast. The first thing I would say is, is if you want to be an actor as a business, this is a very, very long process. In LA, where I'm based these days, they say it's about seven years. Wow. About seven years for you to arrive in LA or start your career before. And, and, and then I'm talking seven years of really good, consistent, hard work in both keeping your craft solid and learning the business and the names of the people that are on the other side of the table and their projects and their desires and where you fit in. Also making enough money to provide your food, water and shelter needs, as well as everything you need to invest in your business financially, your headshots, your coaching, your business career, your, your education, all of that. And at about seven years, you might be in a somewhat of a momentum where maybe you don't have to have that day job anymore. Right. So are you prepared to spend the next seven years? And that's an average. It's not true. Meaning some people will get a little further, a little faster, but most it'll take even longer than that. Just the way it is. We have so many talented, wonderfully talented people and a large number of them in big cities like Los Angeles and New York. Now Atlanta, um, Florida still is right. All the, we'll say, major outlets. And so what if you live in Iowa? What if you're listening to this in somewhere in the middle of Colorado and you have this deep desire? So it takes a while. So that, that's the first tool is realizing it's the long haul and setting your mindset that every step of the way, it's going to be fun. <laughs> you got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. That's so true. It can be the most frustrating and daunting business, but I tell you, you have opportunities as an actor that you don't have with any other career. Sometimes I just pinch myself when I've gotten into a room, whether I'm doing an industrial or whether I'm doing a theatrical piece or film. And, you know, I've traveled to Mexico to shoot a film. I've gone abroad. I've gone to, we shot at the Cannes Film Festival one time during the festival. Actors have a sort of a magical life on one end and a very heartbreaking life on the other. So, the reason I'm loving what you're doing and what you're giving to actors is that you're helping them to have the tools to be able to go out and live that magic. So let's talk about the headshot. What is it about a headshot? What's the magic thing that the agents and casting directors are looking for in a headshot? I'd like to add um, a little bit more context to what the headshot is designed to do. Okay. So a lot of actors will arrive somewhere and somebody said, you need new headshots, whether that's a representative that you're working with or you're representing yourself by self-submissions. They'll go out and they'll get a bunch of different headshots. It's supposed to look like you on a good day. That might have been what it was in the past. But here's the real design of a headshot. Your headshot, coupled with your resume, which is your list of experience, those things together are your brochure for your product. So a lot of actors don't start with the mindset that their product that they're selling is their creativity. And you want to sell yourself as an actor. You need to provide the materials that have your reader on the other end get what it is you provide. Problem is, is most actors don't know what they provide other than I'm a good actor. So before I would even recommend that anybody goes out and get a headshot or positions their resume, they start to think about what it is that they uniquely provide the marketplace. Why should we pick you? I know you're talented. I'm just going to assume that your craft training is stellar and that you have great confidence and charisma. You are eager to show what you have to offer, but define it. What is it? One of my courses called Make Money Acting, Defining Your Product, teaches you to use in words and cover notes and in the writing of your resume, adjectives and things that describe what it is you do. That's the same thing that the headshot should do. 
So for example, if you are, let's just say you're a woman of a certain age and you are play mainly caregiver roles, nurses, mothers, next door neighbor who bakes for the neighborhood at the community events, you're a caregiver. Those are the kinds of roles that you are going to be cast most likely in that will pay you. You then need a headshot that reflects caregiver. The way the clothing that you're wearing imbues caregiver. The way the jewelry that you're wearing says caregiver. The way your hair is styled. The way your eyes hold that energy in that snapshot of a moment where you're being a caregiver. Then on your resume, what kind of roles were also mainly caregiving roles. Obviously, if it's theater and we know the role, that's helpful, but keep them aligned with your image. So I teach that all three things should be aligned. What it is that you offer as a product in this creative industry, and then have your headshot and your resume reflect that. But if you don't know what that is, then you're just throwing it up against a wall and seeing what sticks. So you really have to know who you are. And the thing about being an actor is there's who you are as a person, but then there's also who you are as a product. So it's hard because as a person, we carry our product around inside this meat sack called a physical body, right? And our physical bodies are perceived by the watcher over there, that observer. It includes our height, our hair color, our age, our sex, our uh, voice, the timbre of our voice. I've worked with women that are like super tall. 5'10", 5'11", even six feet. And the way they carry themselves, most likely people are going to think of them as leaders or take charge people, just basically based on their height. So if you're positioning yourself as a product in the marketplace, okay, do I have those leadership qualities? If I'm positioning myself as kind of the innocent, meek and mild one, and the minute you walk in the room and you're six feet tall, that's a disconnect. So I hate to say stereotype, but we are working with story, Joy Story. We are working <laughs> with characters uh, that create story. And there's certain preconceived perceptions. We're breaking out of now ethnicity-wise, but there's still age, height, body type to consider. So uh, those stereotypes are still there. So work with them, not against them. Figure out who you are, what it is you have to sell, what makes you unique, but a twist on something that we're comfortable with. Put that into your note writing, your submission cover notes, your, put that into your headshot, put that into your resume. Now you have a congruent, aligned offering. And that tells the person over there exactly what it is you do. Right. The hard part is your acting teacher taught you you should be able to do everything. Right. Right. They've taken you through the colors of the rainbow, of the emotions. You should be able to do drama. You should be able to make people laugh. You should be able to be the president. You should be able to be the murder victim. You should be able to do everything under the sun. Those are great tools to draw from. But in marketing, I hate to say it, we want you to be one thing. We want you to be the X or the Y or the Z. Because when we're looking for an X, we want you to be, oh, there's Joyce. She does X. And we want you to be on the short list of the X's or when we open up your submission and we're looking for X, we want everything in that submission to go, oh my God, that's an X. So that would be another thing that I would say is find out what you are and then find the alignment of the projects you're submitting yourself for or find the alignment with your representative that that's what you're selling. Find that alignment. Go back to big stars. Julia Roberts, for many, many years, was the queen of romantic comedies. We wanted to see her beautiful, but she had that little edge to her. She was an on-purpose, comedic, slightly sarcastic, together, romantic comedy woman. But then in film, she tried to do Mary Riley, a period piece. Nobody went. She tried to do 200 Days of Rain on Broadway. Eh, it was a high-dollar ticket, kind of got panned. It wasn't until August Osage County, we went, oh my God, Julia can do drama. Guess what? She's always been able to do that. So having found out who I am and starting to think in that way, I don't want to get too crazy with my headshot. I want a straightforward headshot. I want to show, is it in the way I dress or the way I pose or what is it that oh, makes a shot the it great. shot that makes somebody pick it up? 
Well, the first thing is, and this is an old cliche, but it's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. So back when we were doing hard copies mainly and nothing was really online and looked at a shot on a proof sheet through a loop, it's always the eyes. And then when we blew it up, we'd cover up the nose and the mouth and just look at the eyes to make sure it's weird. We, we use this static, meaning still, flat, non-dimensional picture and yet what we're trying to create is the li- the living breathing you right so we want to see that movement and that magic in your eyes but these days Joyce you need a lot more than one headshot so these days first touch whether you are submitting off online for a role or whether you are submitting yourself a representation is online so you need more than one shot you'll use what i call the branded headshot which is that generic or even general i don't know if i have a really good word for it but it is that going back to that example it's caregiver it shouts you i would take that branded headshot that would be my biggest shot on my website that would be my what i'll call my cover shot on my casting profiles that would be on my business card that would be on my postcards yes i still advocate hard copy postcards as follow-up tools because the more touches the more time they see your face and hear your name read your name the more top of mind you become But you'll need other shots that also say caregiver, but maybe a little bit more upscale, maybe a little bit more blue collar. Um, You want to now start to put a little bit of variety because, but you still want that caregiver look and feel throughout these shots. So now you're the caregiver, the farmer's wife who takes care of the family. So you may have something with a plaid shirt or a denim shirt. So that when you, again, are submitting yourself or your representative is submitting you, they can now swap out your default photo that is seen first. When I was an agent, I would craft my submission. So for example, say my client had 10 shots, either on their Actors Access or their Casting Frontier or LA Casting, which is Casting Networks, I would, based on the words that were in the breakdown, the mood that they're trying to create uh, and give us as an agent, I would go into the headshots and go, "Mm, that mood... I would like them to see this shot first. So I'd swap them out and then I would eliminate, because we can do that, take out the shots I don't want them to see. Maybe one that's too upscale that doesn't match and I'd maybe leave two or three smaller shots. So when they open this submission, they're seeing the default picture. They're seeing the three what I'll call supporting pictures that also kind of have that same vibe. And if they get past the pictures on the other end, then they look at your resume. And they're looking for, again, something that matches uh, this caregiver quality, but also now we're seeing where else have you been employed? What other projects have you done that give me the confidence as a casting person that I can give away one of my coveted audition times to you, especially if I don't know you, especially if you've never been in my office before? What's going to make me say yes as a casting person to calling you in and giving you that three to five minute appointment to show me your goods. So the headshot, the resume, the product all need to be aligned. They need to be online. And that one branded headshot, because I do know that we still sometimes bring hard copies, particularly for theater to live auditions. You know, you want, you'll want to use that one branded headshot all over, over and over and over and over and over again we need to clear through the clutter and the sea of other people who want what you want and who provide similar services. Nobody does it exactly like you, but there's enough people out there that are similar enough to you. That's why when you show up in an audition room, you know, you go, whoa, okay, there's a lot of me in here. Hopefully if everybody's done their job right. On that note, we are going to take a short break and hear from our sponsor, but we will be back with Lisa Gold in a few minutes. Looking for the perfect monologue that will nail your next audition? Need something right away? Need a fresh perspective? Monologues2go.com is your one-stop shop for audition material. We understand actors' needs because we've been in your shoes. We know the importance of finding the perfect piece that fits like it was made for you. Pick your favorite monologues and download them instantly. It's that easy. Think of us like a takeout menu, only a whole lot more fun. We're fresh, fast, hot, and delivered to you in seconds monologues to go.com original monologues that work 
And we are back with the marvelous Lisa Gold. Lisa, thank you for coming and bringing so much information to us. We so appreciate it. I want to talk to you now about video. How important is it to have a reel these days? It seems like everybody needs a reel, and it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing because some people don't have a reel when they're starting out. This is a great day and age now that we do use the internet to see the moving, breathing, talking you. And it's a real opportunity for you to share what it is that you have energetically as an actor, or if you have other skills as well, like, you know, uh, special skills, particularly if you're in the commercial field, video is an essential. But here's the thing, the whole thing that used to be a reel, we used to want a three minute reel and then it was shorter and now it's a minute. But if you don't have a body of work to put in a reel, that's okay. That's really okay. The thing that I like most about Actors Access is that you can upload separate shorter clips and also write a little description because I hate to say it, this industry is fast, 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 fast. And people generally don't take the time to look at a reel. Perhaps maybe your agent, once you get in a door, you know, will want to see different ways and things that you can do and stretch and all that. But generally the casting side of the business wants to see exactly what it is they're looking for. So if you're on Actors Access and you upload a little bit of comedy, now again, going back to the caregiver, just to use that as an example. So you're a caregiver who's kind of funny in one. Then you're a caregiver who's uh, dramatic because their daughter needs that shot in terms of endearment. Am I aging myself? Yes. Uh, (laughs) um, You're the caregiver. You know, there's slight, there's variations on the theme, but you want to stay on the theme, but you can have a 10 second clip. You can have a 15 second clip. Now, obviously preferred clips are things that you've actually been hired to do and have shot and you have now lifted and put on your page. But if you don't have that permissible, again, I wouldn't do this for commercials, but for, um, you know, television, film, theater, you can actually do some scenes, but you want to produce it well. You don't want to just have somebody have film you in a chair doing something. You want to see if you can't stage the scene behind you. And you know this, Joyce, if you're doing a monologue, if it's just you. And you're playing a mother talking about her dead son or something dramatic. You want to maybe set the stage of sitting in the living room and having your pearls on or, you know, set the scene. Make sure it's very well lit and have somebody tape you and then get it nicely edited. And again, not too long and upload that clip until you then get some actual authentic work that you have done and then you can replace that clip or if it's if it's working for you leave that up there the other platform that i mainly used when i was head of the commercial division of the agency i worked with is casting networks or in la la casting right on the resume that i love especially if it was a little commercial clip or even a special skill right there on the electronic resume is a little play button so if you have a clip of you riding a horse if horseback riding's under your special skills, if you have a clip of you doing this commercial and that's on your resume, you can just press play and they don't even have to go to a separate space right there. So yes, video is very important. But again, I come back to the whole alignment. Don't put eight different versions of you to show how you can stretch. This is counterintuitive to most things that you've been taught, again, in your craft classes. I am teaching marketing. Even the thought of an actor being a product in a marketplace is tasteful for some people to even consider. However, once you get marketing and realize what drives people to say yes, what drives people to purchase is I'm looking for and I got exactly what I came for. My job as a casting director is to bring to the producer, director, writer, advertising agency exactly what they said they want. How am I going to know? I don't look and go, oh, there's a pretty person and they're the right age range. And gosh, I really hope they can do that. They want the materials to see, oh, I've done that in the past and I can do that in the future. We're buying the future work. We don't want to see 18 different things that you've done in the past because then I go, well, what are they going to be able to do this one well? So if you've done 18 things in the past and six of them do not belong, take them off your resume. 
and leave the, let me see, six from 18, 12 things, <laughs> but 12 things that are descriptive enough and give a historical butt check to the reader of your resume and the watcher of your videos and the clips that say, oh, yes, she can do what I need her to do for my project. And you carve out a reputation like Julia Roberts as the rom-com queen. And then next time you need a rom-com person, you start to become top of mind. Right. I try to use these analogies and examples to have the little light bulbs go off. I know you still don't know what exactly there is to do, but just like college, you didn't get it all on the first day of school. Right. And Lisa, here's another question for you. How much does social networking come into play in marketing these days? Depends on what your product is. If you are strictly an actor for hire, it's really great to post and share with your friends your audition experiences, you know, whether you got something or not. Social media is very important these days, but there's people that can post once or twice a week and gain momentum with their friends and peers and potential audiences elsewhere in the theaters or on Netflix. And then there's people that are content creators that would probably have to post a little bit more. It's not a one size fits all as we delve deeper and deeper and deeper into social media. The one thing though that I come back to, which I spoke about at the beginning is mindset. Once you start to post on social media to gain that audience, there's still a lot of detractors and haters out there. And I would imagine most creators are very sensitive. I heard Whoopi Goldberg talk about this just the other day. She says, I know I open myself up to the hatred that's out there. She's nothing but wonderful and lovely. And she gets death threats. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you. But be aware that when you post on social media, because you want followers, because you've all heard this, that if it's between you and another guy in the room, and the one guy has a million followers and you have seven, they're going to give it to the guy who has a million followers because it's already a built-in audience. But don't rush to just get the followers for the followers' sake. You want to carve again out on your social media presence the thing that matches what you're offering as an actor, caregiver. Post things about your puppies. Post things about your niece and nephew or your own children. Post family-oriented things. If you're the lover type, post, you know, your favorite lipstick, post, you know, you in a bathing suit. If you're the jester and the funny one, talk about great comedians you love, post pictures of Steve Martin, talk about the, the, the latest funny movie you saw. I would stay away from religion and politics. I neither comment nor post anything about either of those subjects because that's where it draws the people out of the woodwork that have a counter opinion other than yours who demand to be heard and controversy does not really help unless you're branding yourself as this. Um, I mean, we have so many people out there now. We have transgender roles. We have non-gender roles. We have different ways of being. If you're so unique and defined in that, then yeah, stir up some controversy, but you have to look at your product first. You have to look at what you're selling first. I keep coming back to that and then have your social media again, match that. And don't read too many of the responses, especially if they become negative. Just go take a walk, breathe and pet a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> As we are both big fans of puppies, I can appreciate that comment, but it's true. You do need to take a step back and go, okay, you know what? Everybody's not going to love me. I am a certain flavor and that's the flavor that I am selling. I want to ask you your signature course, how to get and keep an agent. How does one keep an agent? Like I said, that seven-year average of kind of getting into momentum. I have a, a, a former client who's become a very dear, one of my closest friends. And it's taken him, let's see, since arriving in LA, five years to finally get into a little bit of momentum. But during that time, he went through six to seven agencies. Now, he's a really smart guy. And he knows what he has to offer. And some of those agencies just really couldn't either keep up with him or weren't the right fit because he was so on top of his own marketing and his own product and what he has to offer. So here's the thing. Agents are people too. And some of them are better than others. And some of them, you know, have been around a long time and don't like this new 
submission by computer all day, every day. So they don't, they don't craft the cover note. They don't craft. And then their people aren't getting in the door. And then some agents are fresh and new and grew up with computers and they're 23 years old and they love what they do. And so, yes, moving agencies is up to you, but to keep an agent that you love to stay in their good graces, to create that relationship that is workable for both parties. You don't need to go out to coffee with your agent. You don't need to have dinner and you don't need to ply them with gifts at the holidays, although they're appreciated. That's not what's going to have you keep your agent. Keeping your agent is being accessible and available for every audition that comes in and booking out when you're not. I know that in New York, we have the freelance community and some people have more than one representative. In LA, it's a little different. You are usually under a contract. You can have a a separate commercial agent from your theatrical agent and a separate print agent. So the most you can have is like three. Point is, is if you're going to go out of town, even for a weekend or three days, you book out, you send an email. Generally, that's it saying I'm booking out from this day to this day, because this business moves so fast that if your agent doesn't know that you're away and they submitted you something two days ago, and now the audition is coming in and you're not available to go. Mm, that stinks because they don't make money if you don't make money. And so booking out is very important. Responding to their communication, emails, texts, whatnot. If you haven't heard from them in a while, make yourself known again by dropping them a note. And I love those postcards. Even when you have your own agent and you've, you're in kind of close communication, drop them a postcard or drop them an email. Hey, just wanted to let you know, I just saw... This really great production of Hairspray. Didn't know that there was a role in it for me. Keep an eye out, you know. Just be a human being. If your representative has a Facebook page and is open to having friends on Facebook, friend them. Be friends with them. Send them little messages. Thank them often, right? When you do have the kind of relationship where you've heard about a project or you've seen that something is coming up that you might be right for, you can politely suggest, hey, I think this is coming around the pipe soon. Would you keep an eye out for the casting call and submit me? Because this is something I would truly love to play and I have a good chance of booking. So really it comes down to any relationship, communication. So communicate enough, but not too much. Listen to what your agent tells you. When I was an agent and I said, I need new headshots from you because these are not very good and I'm having trouble getting you any audition appointments with materials that I have. Listen to them. Go get new ones. If your agent says, could you please reposition or credits on your casting networks page? I'm your commercial agent and this is primarily used for commercials. Please put your commercials at the top. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? But if this is your commercial agent and this is a platform that's primarily used for commercials, why as a commercial casting director do I want to surf down through all of this comedy and drama and see your commercials at the end? So there's things that are changing, folks. There's things, there's old ways that we were taught. We have to be adaptable. Give your agent what he wants. If you don't like that, the way they are selling you, then then have a conversation about that or ask why it's needed and have them explain. A lot of people get representatives and then they're afraid to talk to them or they're afraid to do the wrong thing. If you're living in fear inside a relationship, no bueno, not good. So you either need to heal that and connect in a way that inspires you and inspires them to continue to promote you and and be out there in the world because you're awesome and you are, that's the relationship you want. And also along the way, there's so many people that don't have agents and representatives. You're your own best representative anyway, but look at the word represent. It's re-present. Know what you present in the first place. Tie it up in a bow on your box is what are you offering? What are you presenting that your agent then can re present to their extended network. Build your own network, market yourself, and even when you do have an agent, even one you love, you will continue to promote yourself because nobody does it better than you. It's just they've got a different set of network, hopefully at the networks. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you, Lisa, so very much. We could talk for hours. You have so much knowledge and information. And maybe we'll have you back on the show at a later date. But I cannot thank you enough. You are listening to Lisa Gold. 
Her website is yourtalentagent.com. And you can also have one-on-one private coaching with Lisa, which I highly recommend because she's just amazing. Thanks again, Lisa. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Joyce. Thanks for having me. And also don't forget actoutsidethebox.com. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Joyce. You have been listening to The Craft and Biz of Acting. I'm Joyce Story. Until next time, break a leg. Thanks for tuning in to The Craft and Biz of Acting. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave us a rating and a review and share our show with your friends. We're building a supportive and educational community, and we want you to be a part of it. Tune in every week for more helpful insights and tools for honing your craft and booking your next gig. Until next time, break a leg.